Light and shadow controls the overall lighting of your material. In my shader, there's two distinct different lighting sources. So there's the directional light, or the direct lighting that comes from the directional light, and then there's the indirect or ambient lighting that comes from the environment around you. In this case, it would be coming from the sky and causing sort of the bluish tint to these black shadows. Or in this case, you can see it's brown at the bottom and that's from the brown down here. So each lighting type sort of uses lighting or uses those lighting parameters differently. And there's four lighting types in the shader. There's controlled, natural, standardish, and math. Controlled being the default. It's called controlled because it doesn't take into account the ambient lighting in the scene. So where the natural lighting type will mix with the ambient lighting in the scene, the controlled type will not. And it'll just match whatever you set as your lighting ramp exactly. And the lighting ramp is just a gradient that basically goes from the light direction to the opposite of the light direction. And that's basically all it is. You can change it to whatever colors you want. You can mess with the gradient to get that exact look that you want. So let me just revert this back. There we go. So the shadow strength is just going to control the strength of the shadow. In the, in the controlled lighting type, it's basically just going to set it to exactly what you set your lighting ramp as. So as you can see here, the lighting ramp is just this black and white texture, and that's basically what we're getting here. Whereas if you move over to the natural lighting setup, it's the same exact texture, but the indirect lighting is sort of brightening up the shadow and making it look like it should. So if you see the ground here, this is standard shader. The lighting color is very similar, for the, or the shadow color is very similar because standard's doing it in the same way. So if you want your material to match the environment around you correctly, which is generally using standard shader, um, you're going to want to use a natural lighting type with like a black shadow and shadow strength just set to one. This might not look exactly how you want it to look, so play with it, mess around with it but that's how you do it. One thing I see a lot of people doing is they'll go and they'll make a model and they'll see these hard shadows and they'll just go and toggle lighting off. That is not what you want to do. That not only gets rid of the shadow but also gets rid of the environment affecting you in any way. So you're just going to basically be full bright like this at all times. You're going to go into dark worlds and just light up like a light bulb and that's probably not what you want. If you want to get rid of your shadows just lower shadow strength. That is all you need to do. So that's natural and controlled. Here's the standardish lighting type. This is basically created just to mimic the lighting in standard shader. You can adjust the smoothness under the standardish settings to sort of make it look more or less smooth. I think I selected the wrong one. There we go. So that's just so you can better match standard shader if you want to use this. It's not perfect. It's something I'm looking into improving in the future, but it's a fairly good representation of standard lighting. And the last lighting type, and the newest one, is math. It's not totally finished yet. It's still a work in progress. The way it receives lighting is the same as natural, where it's mixing the shadow color with the environment around it. I plan on creating a controlled variant of math, but for now there's just a natural one. And Controlled doesn't actually use the lighting ramp or the shadow strength at all. It uses a, a gradient as start and end. So right now the gradient is set to 0.5 and 1, meaning the shadow is going to go from the center point all the way and like in a smooth gradient to the light direction. And you can mess with that. So you can set the gradient start to 0, and now you're going to have a smooth gradient from where the shadow starts all the way to where the uh, light direction is. And you can mess with that. And if you move the gradient end closer, you'll get a tighter color. And the light tint will tint the light side, and the shadow tint will tint the shadow side. And that's the four lighting types. 
Say you make a gradient and it looks perfect, but it's not in the right spot. Say it's like up here and it looks too close, but you really like how that gradient looks. You can actually use the shadow offset to move that around. So if you just download a lighting ramp or something and you don't want to mess with it in the gradient editor, this is just a quick and easy way to sort of adjust it. It only works for the natural and controlled lighting type. The standard lighting type doesn't have a gradient and neither does math, so it doesn't really function in the same way. All right, AO maps. So AO stands for ambient occlusion. And like we talked about earlier, ambient lighting is the sort of indirect lighting from the scene around you. So the blue from the sky and ambient occlusion just occludes that lighting. So I'm going to grab a noise map if I can spell. I'm just going to get this one with the white circles and black background. And as you can see, the black background is actually just removing the ambient lighting color entirely and all we're left with is this yellow lighting from the sun and where we saw those white circles is sort of the original color mixed so it's the direct and indirect lighting mix the shadows have gone completely black with the absence of indirect lighting because they don't have direct lighting and now they also don't have indirect lighting so they are just unlit they're black and the white spots are normal so you would use ambient occlusion to sort of like make cracks or crevices in a model stand out. You'll see it a lot in the corners of a surface or like in real life, for example, if you put your hands together, you can see that um, it gets dark. It gets darkest where they touch. And that's because it's the ambient lighting from around you is being occluded. But you could still shine a light into that crack and light it up, meaning direct lighting should still affect it <clears throat> and that's all there is to ambient occlusion it works a little differently on each lighting type the um, controlled lighting type for example it doesn't really have indirect lighting at all so you're not going to see it have much effect in the shadow but it'll function normally on the light side of the model and you can just adjust the strength of it with the AO strength slider <clears throat> Minimum brightness is basically what it says. It sets a sort of limit to how dark your model can go. It's the minimum brightness. So if I set it to one, my model can get no darker than maximum brightness. <laughs> and if I lower it to say like 0.1, you're gonna see it just sort of lightens the shadows up, but doesn't do much to this. And you would basically never wanna use this the only time you really want to use it is if you want to make sure that your model model is visible in every possible lighting situation. But a lot of the time, if you're in an area that's dark, your model should probably be dark. So if you don't like that and you want your model to be visible, turn up min brightness a little bit. Um, for most cases, you're probably just going to leave this at zero. <clears throat> Indirect contribution is just the contribution of indirect lighting to the final light color. So the direct lighting is sort of a mix of the indirect and direct lighting. And changing the indirect contribution sort of just controls how much the area around you will affect that light color. So if I set the indirect contribution to one, I'm going to get basically just the sky color is going to be affecting it. And if I set it to zero, it's just going to get really bright because the light is sort of shining on it. You Generally want to keep this around 0.2. That's a good match for standard. So because basically how this works is standard, you can see over here, is super bright on the front and sort of has like a smooth fall off until it reaches the shadow point. And the indirect contribution is basically a slider that moves along that path until it reaches the shadowed color. So to match a scene correctly with a tune shader you kind of have to pick and choose where you fall in this gradient and 0.2 seems to be a good average it matches most scenes correctly lighting is something that sort of always gets improved over time so maybe in the future we may not need indirect contribution just because we'll find that perfect value and no longer require a slider for it but if you think that your model's not matching scenes correctly feel free to just mess with this 
Receive casted shadows is exactly what it says it is. It allows your model to receive casted shadows from other objects in the environment. Nothing too special here. One thing to note is you can see here the shadows are kind of chunky. That's because receiving casted shadows makes it so that your model is going to start using Unity shadows. And right now it's using that smooth gradient so you get that nice smooth look. But when you receive casted shadows, because the backside of this would be in shadow, you're going to get these lower resolution Unity shadows, which are perfectly fine in a lot of cases. But if you see your shadows looking kind of chunky, maybe check to see if you have this on and whether you want it on or not. <clears throat> detail shadows are sort of they're there to represent form in your model so in anime or cartoons you'll see that a lot of art sort of uses shadows not to show the light direction but to actually show the form of a character or object so detail shadows sort of let you mimic that you can draw shadows onto your model where you want to represent form more in a more controlled way so let me just look up a random noise texture and get these zigzagged lines and we can turn detail strength up and you'll see that it sort of forces shadows into those areas based on whatever lighting ramp and mode you're using standardish obviously doesn't support this because standardish doesn't have a lighting ramp or anything so <laughs> it's meant to just sort of do its own thing there's not a lot of control you have over it but detail strength, um, you'll see a lot of models where, say you have like a jacket, you'll see the shadows drawn onto the jacket. Rather than drawing them directly onto the main texture, you can actually draw them onto this detail shadow map, and then the colors will more, um, they'll match your scene better, rather than just being a constant color that's drawn onto a texture. So just know that this is here and it's something you can play with. You're probably not going to use it very often because most models don't have detail shadow maps, but um know it's there and it's something you can mess with so that covers light and shadow if you have any questions about this or anything else in the shader feel free to join the discord in the description below thank you for watching